What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Duran, and I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Duran. And today we're going to be talking about a split in the Labour Party in the UK. Right, Alexander, you, you predicted this in a video that we did a couple of weeks back. And uh, you predicted that there would be a split in the Labour you said that they would form a new centrist type of party. You also said that they would uh, draft in and recruit some people from the Tories as well. It looks like your prediction is coming true. Explain to us what happened in the UK, what this split is about. What does it mean for Corbyn? What does it mean for Theresa May? What does it mean for Brexit? Right. Let us first of all be very clear about this. This is all about Brexit. I mean, this is the one thing that this split, the people who are behind this split, who are up to now seven Labour MPs, all seem to be principally uh, concerned about and um, angry about. They are extreme Remainers. They are very, very keen on Britain remaining within the European Union. Now, if you recall what we discussed in our video, the one that we did a little while ago, in which uh, I said that there would be a split within the Labour Party and that there would be an attempt to set, set up a centrist party, what I said this was all about was it was an attempt to create a centre party bringing together in the House of Commons a party committed to stopping Brexit, which would draw in both anti-Corbyn Labour MPs, and we've now seen the beginning of that happening, and which would also try to bring in anti-Brexit Conservative MPs, of whom there are said to be around uh, t between 20 and 40, depending on which calculations you follow. Now, the very first thing that has happened since these seven Labour MPs left the Labour Party is that they're now talking to the Conservative MPs who oppose Brexit and are inviting them to join them. So it is clearly all about Brexit. What will it, however, actually do? I predict that instead of slowing down Brexit, it will actually harden Brexit even further. It will make Corbyn's position in the Labour Party even stronger than it has been up to now by removing from inside the Labour Party those who have been consistently most active in conspiring against him and trying to leverage the Labour Party to take an anti-Brexit position. And I think what it will do as a consequence is that it will strengthen Corbyn's policy of keeping the Labour Party on a pro-Brexit tangent. So that instead of making Brexit less likely or trying to prevent it, these people, because their plot is not been properly thought through, have actually made Brexit even more likely than it already was. Is this Tony Blair's party? Is yes, I think it is. Is this the party that he's Is this the party that he's always yeah. wanted? Is he behind this? Yeah. Yes, I, well, I don't know to what extent he's behind it, but these people are clearly uh, uh, close followers of his, uh, great fans of his, uh, uh, and people who it is not a mistake to refer to them as Blairites. The one thing I'm going to say about them straight away is that, of course, these are almost completely unknown people. Most people in Britain have not heard of any one of these seven people. The only one who's known to some of people is a man called Chuka Umuna, who was for a short time a member of Corbyn's shadow cabinet, despite being an arch Blairite. But none of the others has had any important position either in the Labour Party or in government. They're not very well known. And frankly, if this is the best they could do, then it's actually started 
it's actually started on at a dis in a dismal way. And the opinion polls, the one opinion poll that has happened, doesn't show much support for them either. So already it looks as if this project is badly miscarrying. And frankly, looking at these people, looking at the very pro-EU, very Blairite positions they're taking, it's very difficult to understand how the those people who've hatched this plot can really think it would succeed because what they are doing is so contrary to the current of opinion in British society at the moment that it's almost impossible to understand how people can be so completely out of touch. Is the EU um, happy about this development? Are they, are, are they behind this development? Are they happy about it? Are they pushing for it? Are they good? Well, I think they've known about it? it. I think if Yes, I think they are going to promote it, and I think they've known all about it. But I don't think they're exactly behind it, because I don't think they have the close understanding of British politics that uh, 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 would be needed to organise a, uh, a, a split like this. The split is has got British origins. It's got British establishment and Blairite origins behind it. If we go back to that previous video I did, its objective is twofold. It is to stop Brexit, which it won't do, and it is to stop Corbyn, which it won't do either. What it's going to do is going to strengthen Corbyn, and it is going to make Brexit uh, uh, more likely. You asked earlier about what it does for Theresa May. I think it helps her also, incidentally, in the sense that um, it, it makes it less likely when people see what a weak start these people have uh, 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 had, that there will in fact be many Conservative MPs uh, uh, um, going over and joining them. Frankly, I'd expected many more Labour MPs to be part of this project, not just seven. And I'd expected rather bigger names than the ones we've seen. What, why do you think some of the, the Labour MPs decided not to join these, these seven guys? Well, probably for all sorts of reasons. But I think politicians being political animals, I think they've done their own private polling. And they've discovered what what I said, that there just isn't very much support for this thing. Uh, um, th there was an opinion poll that was rushed out within hours of the whole thing started, which gave this grouping 8 uh, percent. Both Labour and Conservative are up between 35 and 40 percent. And most of the percentage points that they seem to have taken are from the Liberal Democrats who are already an existing centre party. Now, 8% on the day they were launched, that should have been much more. That should have been the, the moment when there was a lot of support from them. I predict that will dwindle. And in three months' time, or a few months' time, they'll be completely forgotten. I find it just really weird that the forces, the powerful forces that be in the Remain camp kind of, they came up with these seven characters to try and, and sabotage Brexit. Yeah. Why, why these seven people? Why, how did they come up with these names? Because, I, I mean, it's obvious that these politicians, they didn't think this up on their own. There are no. other forces, more powerful forces out there that say, Absolutely. Okay, we, we need a Remain movement. We need to sabotage Brexit. But why did, why did these seven people get picked? Yeah. It's the, they're, they're the kamikazes. None of the big boys, not Hillary Benn, not Tom Watson, these you know big figures within the Labour Party, wanted to take the plunge. So they they, they got these uh, seven fools. I'm sorry to use that expression <laughs> because, because that's what they are. They got these seven fools to take the plunge, declare, the, declare themselves, you know, seceded from the Labour Party. If the polls had been very good, and there'd be lots of support for it, then, as I said, the, the big beasts in the Labour jungle, the Tom Watsons and the Hillary Benns and the Yvette Coopers, might have joined in. But, as I said, I don't think they'll be very impressed with what they've seen this time. I mean, can I just say something? I mean, it's difficult to convey the amount of ridicule that these characters have been exposed to. And one thing absolutely captures it, for me, all seven of them,
are big, big supporters of the second referendum idea. They all say they want a second referendum. So already they're being asked, look, you were elected to your constituencies as Labour MPs. If you want a second referendum, why don't you have a second vote in your constituencies through a parliamentary by-election to find whether people support you. I mean, how can you demand a second vote for a, a second referendum and not a second vote on yourself? And of course, none of them have come up with any kind of sensible answer in response to all of this. I mean, the other thing is one of them, uh, 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 um, an MP who I've never heard of before called Angela Smith, was asked some questions um, on a programme on identity issues. And, of course, she, she immediately fell into the, you know, started blundering and talking about people people of peculiar tinge, tinges in terms of skin colours. This is, of course, a group which is supposed to be all about identity politics. And it turns out that, you know, they, they haven't even managed to get their own language sorted out on that. So they are pretty unimpressive characters, frankly. I mean, they've been derided. They've been ridiculed. Their polls, uh, the polling figures for them are awful. And they were the mugs, the idiots who were persuade, persuaded to take the plunge. Yeah, lambs to the slaughter. Now, lambs to the slaughter. Yeah, one of I want you to comment on some of the things that I heard them say about why they created this new yeah. this new movement, yeah. this new party, and why they left Labour. Mm. One of the reasons they cited was the anti-Semitism mm. of Jeremy Corbyn. So I want you to comment yeah. on that. Another thing they 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 cited was that the the Labour Party has gone too radical left. Yeah. Too radical left. And then they said it was becoming too socialist. And we've heard a lot of this in the U.S. as well. So, yeah. so they're, they kind of package this all together. They never really mentioned, at least I didn't see them really mention Brexit and that this yeah. was a big, a big factor in them splitting labor yeah. apart. Yeah. They, they seem to pin it more on Corbyn, anti-Semitism, socialism, et cetera. Yes. What do you make yes. of those comments? Every, every conceivable, uh, uh, reason uh, invented reason for leaving the Labour Party, except the real one, which, to be absolutely clear, is Brexit. I mean, it is not about any of those other issues. Now, I've written a long article on cons for Consortium News, actually, which I think it's time that we republished, actually, on the Duran, on the subject of the anti-Semitism, supposed anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, and by Corbyn himself. Um, th that is a completely... Uh, concocted uh, um, story, allegation. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying entirely when I say completely concocted, I'm not saying that there aren't any people with anti-Semitic views in the Labour Party. There aren't people with anti-Semitic views in the Labour Party and the Conservative Party and various other parties. But it is not a major thing. It has been blown up out of all proportions in order to discredit Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, of that, I have no doubt at all. And um, um, and of course, they have brought it up in order to justify this split. But I don't think anyone should take that seriously. As for being, you know, Labour being too socialist and uh, all of those things, yes, Labour has moved very significantly to the left over the last uh, three years since Jeremy Corbyn became Prime Minister. And yes, there are many people in British Britain who are not happy with that. And yes, there are many people within, some people within the Labour Party who are not happy with that. The way you challenge that is you use the institutions of the Labour Party to challenge Jeremy Corbyn and his leadership, and you work to try to modify those politics right. if you think those politics are wrong. That is what Jeremy Corbyn did. He spent 30, 40 years fighting within the Labour Party to get his views accepted. These people have most of the parliamentary Labour Party on their side. They have large parts of the party organisation on their side. They have the deputy leader of the Labour Party, Mr Tom Watson, on their side. If they thought that Labour was gone too far to the left, the right thing to have done would have been to organise against it 
rather than set up a or, or seek to set up, because I haven't even yet set it up, a centrist party which is bound to fail and which is going to make it possible for Corbyn to take the Labour Party even further to the left. Right. All right. So what's next, Alexander, oh, with this? So so what is next? I, th- I predict this is going to be a nine-day wonder. I think it's going to fade. I think it's going to make, as I said, Corbyn's position within the Labour Party stronger. I think that um, as a result, there will be a fewer attempts from within the Labour Party to stop Brexit or to uh, uh, arrange a second referendum. And as a result, I think that the prospects of Britain leaving the EU on the 29th of March, um, in other words, having a Brexit, have materially increased. And given the parliamentary and political arithmetic that is still looking increasingly likely, it's going to be a no-deal Brexit. All right. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. Visit The Durant Shop, pick up a t-shirt and help support The Durant. In the description box down below, you will find links to our PayPal and Patreon pages. Please donate to The Durant. That really helps us out a lot. And of course, you can get a copy of this video in audio formats. Follow us on iTunes and SoundCloud. And don't forget, go to thedurant.com to see all the articles that Alexander is linking up to every day. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant, thank you once again. Until next time, everybody, take care.